Tesla just posted a video of their Optimus robot doing kung fu moves. Meanwhile, there's a humanoid robot that's been working non-stop at a BMW factory for five months straight. And China just deployed 300,000 robots in a single factory operation. Oh, and OpenAI is now worth more than $500 billion. That's more than Coca-Cola, Netflix, and Nike combined. This week in AI and robotics has been absolutely wild, so let me break down what's actually happening versus what's just flashy demos. Hey everyone, welcome back to Artificial Fluency Technology. Today we're covering the biggest developments in AI and robotics, and I'm gonna be honest with you about what's genuinely impressive versus what's basically marketing theater. Because here's the thing, when Tesla shows a robot doing Kung Fu, it looks cool. But when Figure shows a robot actually working in a real factory for five months, that's the story that matters more. Let me explain why. Let's start with Tesla's Optimus doing Kung Fu, because it's getting all the attention on social media. The video shows Optimus performing martial arts movements, punches, kicks, defensive stances. It's smooth, it's coordinated, and it looks impressive. People are freaking out in the comments saying, robots are taking over, and this is terrifying. But let me give you some context. This is choreographed movement in a controlled environment. It's essentially a pre-programmed dance routine, just with kung fu moves instead of pop music. The robot isn't adapting to an opponent, it's not making strategic decisions, it's not even responding to unexpected situations. Is it technically impressive? Sure. The fact that a humanoid robot can maintain balance while executing these movements shows real progress in motor control and stability, but it's not fundamentally different from Boston Dynamics robots doing backflips years ago. It's a demo designed to generate buzz. Here's my honest take. Tesla is really good at generating viral content. They understand that a robot doing kung fu gets more attention than incremental improvements in manufacturing capabilities. But don't confuse viral demos with practical utility. The real question is, can Optimus do useful work in real-world conditions? And that brings us to Figure's robot, which is actually answering that question. While everyone's obsessing over kung fu robots, Figure announced that their humanoid robot has been working at a BMW factory for five consecutive months without major issues. Let me repeat that. Five months of continuous operation in a real production environment. Not a demo, not a controlled lab, an actual factory where things go wrong, conditions change, and the robot needs to adapt. This is the robotic story that should be making headlines, because this is proof that humanoid robots can do real work in real conditions over extended periods. That's the milestone that actually matters for the future of robotics in industry. What's the robot doing? Assembly tasks, material handling, quality control, the kind of repetitive but precise work that factories need done reliably. And apparently, it's been reliable enough that BMW hasn't pulled it out. This is what progress looks like. Not flashy demos, but sustained performance in demanding environments. And it suggests we're closer to practical deployment of humanoid robots in manufacturing than most people realize. Now, let's talk about scale because China just deployed 300,000 robots in what they're calling a large-scale factory solution. 300,000! That's not a typo. That's more robots in one operation than most countries have in their entire industrial sector. This isn't about individual robot capabilities. It's about infrastructure, coordination, and the willingness to completely redesign manufacturing around automation. China is essentially building factories where humans are the minority, not the default. And here's what concerns me about this. The West is still debating whether robots will take jobs, while China is already building the infrastructure to make it inevitable. They're not waiting for perfect humanoid robots. They're deploying whatever works right now at massive scale. This creates a manufacturing advantage that's going to be very hard to compete with. When your entire factory is optimized for robots instead of humans, you can operate 24-7, you don't need break rooms or safety equipment designed for people, and you can iterate on processes much faster.
The geopolitical implications are huge if China can manufacture at significantly lower cost with higher consistency because of robot deployment at this scale. That's a massive competitive advantage. Let's pivot to OpenAI because they just crossed a $500 billion valuation. To put that in perspective, that's more than Coca-Cola, Netflix, Nike, McDonald's for a company that doesn't actually make physical products and isn't profitable in the traditional sense. That's an astronomical valuation. Is it justified? That depends on whether you believe OpenAI is building the foundation of AGI or just a very good chatbot. The bulls argue that whoever leads in AI will dominate the next decade of technology. The bears argue this is the biggest tech bubble since the dot-com crash. And Jeff Bezos just waded into this debate with some comments about the AI bubble. He didn't say AI isn't real or important. He said there's excessive speculation and investment chasing limited opportunities. Coming from someone who built Amazon during the actual dot-com bubble, that's worth paying attention to. My take? OpenAI is genuinely valuable, but $500 billion feels like it's pricing in perfect execution of a very optimistic roadmap. If they achieve AGI, the valuation will look cheap in retrospect. If they plateau at very good language models, the valuation will look insane. OpenAI held their Dev Day event and announced a bunch of new applications and tools for developers. The most interesting part for me isn't the individual features, it's the AMD partnership. OpenAI has been almost entirely dependent on NVIDIA's GPUs. This partnership with AMD is about diversifying their chip supply and potentially reducing costs. Because at the scale OpenAI operates, every percentage point of cost reduction on compute is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. This also signals something important. The AI infrastructure layer is maturing. It's not just about having the best model anymore, it's about having efficient deployment, cost-effective scaling, and supply chain resilience. And speaking of infrastructure, there's news that OpenAI is working with Joni Ive, the designer behind the iPhone, on a screenless AI assistant device. And apparently this could be a $1 billion project. The concept is essentially an AI device that you interact with entirely through voice with no screen, just an AI assistant in a physical form factor. My honest reaction, I'm deeply skeptical. We've seen this attempted before. Amazon Echo, Google Home, even Humane's AI pin. Screenless interfaces sound great in theory, but in practice, people want visual feedback for most tasks. Could Joni Ive crack the design problem that everyone else has struggled with? Maybe. The man designed the iPhone, so you can't dismiss it. But I think the fundamental challenge isn't design, it's that screens are just really useful for conveying information efficiently. Unless this device does something fundamentally different from existing voice assistants, I don't see why it would succeed where others have struggled. But I'm willing to be surprised. DeepMind announced CodeMender, a tool that automatically fixes bugs in code. This is less flashy than Kung Fu robots, but potentially more impactful for more people. The idea is that CodeMender can analyze code, identify bugs, understand the intended behavior, and generate fixes automatically. If this works as advertised, it could significantly speed up development cycles and reduce the time developers spend on debugging. This is the kind of practical AI application that actually improves productivity without requiring people to change their entire workflow. You're still writing code, but the AI is helping you fix problems faster. Is it going to eliminate programmer jobs? No, but it might change what programmers spend their time on less debugging, more designing and architecting systems. There's new research showing AI can diagnose early stage Alzheimer's with high accuracy by analyzing speech patterns and cognitive tests. This is genuinely exciting because early diagnosis is one of the biggest challenges in treating Alzheimer's. The earlier you catch it, the more treatment options are available and the better the outcomes. But traditional diagnosis often happens too late because the early symptoms are subtle and easily missed. If AI can catch these patterns earlier than human doctors typically do, that's a meaningful medical advancement. This is the kind of AI application that saves lives and improves quality of life. 
Before we talk about NVIDIA's market value and which jobs AI might actually eliminate, if you're finding this breakdown of AI and robotics developments helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, comment with which stories surprised you most, and subscribe to the channel for more weekly analysis of what's actually happening in tech. NVIDIA's market value continues to climb, and they're now one of the most valuable companies in the world. But here's what's interesting. They're not making AI. They're making the shovels for the AI gold rush. Every company training large AI models needs NVIDIA GPUs. OpenAI, Google, Meta, Anthropic, they're all buying massive quantities of NVIDIA hardware. And because there's limited competition in high-end AI chips, NVIDIA has pricing power. This is actually a safer bet than investing in individual AI companies. Because even if some AI companies fail or get disrupted, whoever wins will still need GPUs. NVIDIA makes money regardless of which AI approach ultimately succeeds. That's why their valuation keeps growing, even as questions mount about the AI bubble. They're selling infrastructure, not speculation. Let's talk about the uncomfortable topic everyone's dancing around which jobs AI and robots will actually eliminate. Based on what we're seeing with Figure's factory robot and China's massive deployment, here's my honest assessment. Jobs at high risk in the next five years, factory assembly workers already being replaced, data entry and basic clerical work, AI can do this now, basic customer service, chatbots are getting good enough, simple programming tasks, code mender and similar tools, Transportation and delivery. Autonomous vehicles are coming. Jobs at medium risk in 5 to 10 years. Warehouse operations. Amazon is already heavily automated. Basic accounting and bookkeeping. AI can process financial data. Entry-level legal research. AI can analyze documents quickly. Medical transcription and basic diagnostics. AI is getting very good at this. Jobs still relatively safe. Anything requiring physical dexterity in unstructured environments, plumbing, electrical work. Creative roles requiring genuine innovation, not just content generation. Jobs requiring complex human interaction and emotional intelligence. Strategic decision-making roles where context and judgment matter. The pattern is clear. Repetitive, structured tasks are being automated first, but even safe jobs will change. You'll be working with AI tools, not doing everything manually. Here's what I want you to take away from all these developments. The Kung Fu robot is a distraction. The real story is figure working in a BMW factory for five months. That's the signal in the noise. OpenAI's $500 billion valuation is either brilliant or insane, and we won't know which for several years. Jeff Bezos is right to call out the bubble dynamics, but that doesn't mean AI isn't transformative. China's 300,000 robot deployment should terrify Western policymakers because it's not about individual technology superiority. It's about willingness to commit to automation at scale. The Johnny Ive AI device will probably be beautiful, but might not solve a problem people actually have. We'll see. And the job displacement conversation needs to move from will AI take jobs to how do we help people transition as AI takes specific jobs? Because it's happening right now, not in some distant future. Look, this week's developments show we're in a weird transition period. We have robots doing kung fu for demos, while other robots are actually working in factories. We have companies worth half a trillion dollars that aren't profitable. We have practical tools like CodeMender alongside speculative devices like screenless AI assistants. The hype and the reality are both happening simultaneously, and it's getting harder to separate them. My advice? Pay attention to what's being deployed at scale, not what's being demoed for cameras. Figure's five-month factory operation matters more than Optimus's kung fu routine. And if your job involves repetitive, structured tasks, start learning skills that are harder to automate. Because whether it happens in five years or ten years, it's coming. What do you think? Are you more excited or concerned about robots and factories? Do you think OpenAI's valuation makes sense? Which jobs do you think will be most affected? Let me know in the comments below. If this weekly breakdown of AI and robotics helped you understand what's actually happening versus what's just hype, consider subscribing for more analysis that separates signal from noise. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.